Loveline. Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Loveline. 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 With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. We're hearing a 10 That's second delay here Dr. in our head. Dr. Drew. Chris, what, turn something what? down, Chris. What, what? Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Nope, we've not fixed a problem. Matthew Lillard is uh, here tonight. Always good to see him. Word. Without a paddle, name of the uh, new movie. No, it's we fixed. Had, uh, oh, no, it's good. Seth yeah. Green and Dax in here a couple of weeks ago giving a plug. They're uh, very there funny you. guys, those guys. There you go, Chris. Uh, Engineer Chris, I get the I get the feeling, picks up the phone and talks to nobody when he screws up something on his board. <laughs> <laughs> Makes him look like he's doing something. It's, good job, Chris. It's smart, though. All right, buddy. We're good now. Tight. Yeah. Tight. Matthew Lillard. Good to hey. see you, buddy. How's it going, fellas? I just came from your buddy... Um, Oh, Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel. Yeah. Yeah, how'd that go? I thought I was terrible. No. Yeah, honestly, I think I just, I fell short. Really? But here's here's the thing. You're, how can you you're, fall short? You're just sitting there you're talking. You're an actor. Here, can I just say, I'm trying to be a movie star now. Mm-hmm. It's a new thing. I thought I'd try to be like this handsome leading guy. And I was so self-deprecating that halfway through, I was like self-conscious. I'm like, I have to be stronger and stop beating myself up in front of the entire world. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't do it. I was just, and I, I don't know if my my story was that funny. Well, I'll, you want to be funny and it wasn't, I don't know. But here's here's the thing. You're you're nice looking. You look good with your Not shirt that off. Good. Yeah, and the shirt off. You're tall. Then. Um you're you you you're in many many big movies. You're you're a movie star and you don't really have to be that funny or that engaging. You have to not be an a-hole. Mm. Number right, one, which I'm not. Which, so what sets yeah. you out from all the other sort of. Stars. Here, no. Here's what you need to do a- as a celebrity. You need, you need. I mean, as a leading. These are the rules. A- yeah, as a leading man type. Okay. You need, you need. To this not, is a new realm for me. I was the best I, friend for a long time. I know, but you're moving into leading man type, I'm and here's, trying. here's all that's required of you on these on these TV talk shows is not be an a hole and not be too high. Too other high. That, too high. On drugs. Too, too, too effed up. up. Yeah. You know, I did have a cocktail or two. I will admit to you right now, Drew. No, that's, I'm I out said, of cocktails. I mean, I have a problem. I said two. Yes. And, and in Drew's mind, yes. In if my you, mind, it's T-W-O, but in yours, it's T-O-O. That's right. You have a cap of Robitussin. You have a problem, yeah. according to Dr. Drew. But my point is- Do you ever is, have a cocktail on like a Saturday night? Do you oh, ever like- oh, Yes. Yeah, you do? I don't get ripped, but no, yeah. When was the last time you were just hammered when you were housed? College, yeah. College? Oh no! Come really? on, yeah, really? really? Come I on! Like, I, don't, I don't like it. What are you gonna do when the boys start drinking? They're yeah. gonna drink. Yeah. Oh my boy, oh. Drew's young sons are here tonight. I think about, I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Here, you want to talk? Oh, see, look, Drew doesn't want to get into it. Here, here's the whole, here's the whole thing. We're still on, we're still on the rules. Yeah. Oh, well, I want to say this about Drew. First off, we've been out a couple of nights and drank some red wine. Sure. You know, absolutely got a little buzz going. Uh, Drew's only vomited from booze how many times in your life? Half does my name, I mean. Six times? Yeah. You, have you vomited six yeah, times yeah. from booze? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Because I'm into the eighties, but yeah. I, I thought you were like <laughs> I, th- I thought you were like two or three. No, that was like in college. That's how I can tell if I want to hang out with someone. How many times have you vomited? And I'm counting making yourself vomit because the bed is spinning. That's the from, best feeling in the world. From booze. Nothing better. No I mean literally it just makes the whole next week better. Yeah. You know oh. my you know what my big move is? My big move is over hydrating myself before I go to bed. Oh, that's I smart. Do that. Yeah. So there's a big volume of vomit. Doc, Dr. Drew's uh Dr. Drew's voice is ringing in my ear when i'm loaded which is like it's like 4 30 in the morning it's like okay i've been drinking all night i gotta drink like uh, a quart and a half of tap water i gotta drink some um i got i gotta get some uh like uh vitamins in me so potassium like, into me and all that kind of stuff uh, drink, drink water and i'm like chug 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 i do not say that to somebody who's gonna vomit and then i lie down on the bed and then i vomit because i drank oh, again volumes, of water yeah yeah all right but you feel better in the morning no. I do. Couple no. Advil? Yeah. Here's the trick. You're what drinking all night. Yeah. You wake up. The first time you have to go to the bathroom at like five in the morning because you've been drinking. Right. And then you drink the water before you go to bed. At that interstate at that stop, right. four Advil. Four Advil. Good. You're good to go. Four Advil. Four Advil. You wake up at nine o'clock and you're bingo. Right. Right. Start- Drew, what are your what are your tips if you're loaded and you're going to bed? Don't you, drive. You're gonna be hung over. You already Well, hung. Adam, my fa- my favorite piece of advice, I know you share this one too, is uh, don't drink too much. Oh. 
Oh, let me, come on. Let me say this. Let me say this because I am going to strangle the pussies that give those uh, every year, <laughs> every year. And then we're go- and then we're going to talk about without a paddle. But every year around New Year's, coming up next on the Channel Nine News, tips for uh, not getting hung over this year. And then you come back and it's uh, same tip every time, which is drink a ton of water. Like for every for every alcohol drink you drink, drink a glass of water. You know what and that makes you do. P. It just yeah. makes. That's a, that's a that's a glass of alcohol you're not going to drink now. Right. You right. filled yourself right. up. Right. And then it's like, and then they give you this one. And as always, don't overdo it. Oh, so if I just drink a half glass of champagne, that's your tip? Your hangover tip is don't get drunk? Are you high? Ridiculous. That's not a tip. Ridiculous. It, it, yeah, it's like, oh, you want some tips on how to improve your uh, mileage in your automobile? Don't drive. Don't drive. <laughs> yeah, are you kidding? Walk to work. Take a dog sled. That's not a tip. RTD. A tip is having me drink a ton like I normally do. And not getting hung over. You not, the, not doing you know the, the reality? behavior. The recipe. The, the recipe, recipe yes, for happiness the, recipe. the next there day. There is no recipe. There the, is. the reality is there is nothing you can do. It is al- it's alcohol withdrawal. What can help? Is it withdrawal? Uh, I always, it's withdrawal, yeah. It's not well, dehydration. There, there's, no. It's withdrawal. There, there, there's a toxic effect of alcohol with some of the vomiting is from a direct intoxicating effect. But right. the, 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 you feel the next day is withdrawal. You want it. That's it. You don't your body, want it. No, your body is just in withdrawal. Well, your body needs it. Does your body need it? How about a hair thing. from the dog that bit you? How about but a that cocktail? That intensifies the withdrawal, so it makes it worse next, you know, a few uh, hours later. Well, I'm worse. not worried about noon. I'm worried about 10 a.m., <laughs> brother. How about a Bloody Mary? The Seriously. best recipe. Come on. Bloody you know you're going to fire it up after the Bloody Mary. Does Bloody Mary <laughs> take the edge off? It could. All right. I'm going to have one. Chris, give me a Bloody Mary. Then by about 4 p, I'll have a seizure. That's good. Ah, p- p- me? No, I'm a heavyweight. Matthew Lillard here, everyone without a paddle, coming out uh, this on the 20th, tomorrow. this Friday, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now, this movie is, uh, because we had Seth and uh, Dak Shepard in here, Funny must guys. have been two weeks ago. Yeah, they were great. Uh, I thought for some reason, usually when someone comes in and plugs the movie, the movie then comes out the next day, like right. like will be the case uh, sure. with you tomorrow. So I thought it was out, and then I thought, oh, no, uh, Matthew's coming in here. I haven't heard. Uh, this movie came and went, I thought, for a split second yesterday. Yeah. I haven't heard, but it's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. we've been on the road. Uh, we did a month tour oh my around God. the United States. Oh. Yeah, it, It's great, actually. You're promoting Paramount, it or having releases promoting and it. stuff? Oh, promoting oh it. Uh, Paramount really believes in the movie. Oh. We collectively love the movie, and so we went to... I mean, San Francisco, Philadelphia, Toronto, down Atlanta, back up to New York. You know, wow. so we did this huge tour and, you know, trying to get people out to go see the movie. So they came. We were back in L.A. and they did the show. And I was in Dallas, I think. Is it uh, if you would liken it to a uh, genre of movie, what would you liken it to? You know, it's kind of like a stand by me, kind of like uh, romancing the stone. Oh, so really? a bunch of guys Me- meets going vacation this, meets vacation. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah. Uh, no, it's about these three guys that go in the backwoods. One of their buddies dies in the early frames of the movie, and they come back to be pallbearers from their, you know, they're all these high school friends. And they go on this event, they find this treasure map to what they think is the lost treasure of D.B. Cooper, mm-hmm. who is a guy that jumped out of a plane in the 70s with all his money over Oregon. So they go into the backwoods of Oregon trying to find this lost treasure, and all hell breaks loose. Uh-huh. Yeah, people uh, who don't know this story, and I guarantee nobody listening to this show knows the story, and I will bet you never heard of it. You don't know D.B. Cooper? Drew? Don't know him. Come on. Drew's an idiot. Do you know D.B. Cooper? Of course I know D.B. Cooper. Tell, I tell. guarantee Engineer Chris does know D.B. No Cooper. No idea. Tell. Do you have, wait, wait, Chris, do you have, seriously, do you <laughs> know who know Burt Reynolds is? is? Listen, he thinks, he thinks he's on K-Earth. <laughs> K-Earth? Uh, arrow, arrow, do you know? Listen, do you know who Burt Reynolds is? Yes. All right. Well, name one movie. One movie? I don't know, but he did a lot of stuff. Oh, good. I know him. That's fantastic. All right. Smoke of the Man. Boogie Night. Yes. Right. So what? So what? Right. Right. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you about yeah. D.B. Cooper, by the way. And uh, you probably know the story, Matthew, so you stop me if I'm uh, wrong. But I- I'm just telling yeah. it so uh, Drew knows. Please. I'm not just uh, jumping on. This guy, and it's going to f- sound familiar to you eventually, Drew. This guy um, jumped out of a commercial jet, a flight. Uh, he, he basically, in the 70s. Mid seventies, probably oh. early or seventy four, seventy five, somewhere in there. Sure, he uh, he hijacked the plane essentially, landed, told them bring a whole bunch of money on board. They put a bunch of whole bunch of money on board. He took back off again, flying over you know northwest, jumped out of the plane with the suitcase and the money and a parachute. In the middle of winter, never never seen again. Middle of the winter, 
jumped out of a commercial flight. You know, he wasn't flying a Cessna. How how high was he? Like uh, thirty thousand feet. Oh, yeah, so he, I, he disintegrated. No, I don't. I don't know if he was thirty thousand feet. I don't know if he had the pilot bring it down to you know twelve thousand feet, yeah, whatever it was. Eight hundred miles, an, six hundred miles an hour, though. Well, no, they forget they, it. No, but they 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 can slow those planes down. Yeah. Fly two hundred miles an hour, yeah. or something like that. And he jumped out, and uh, they never found him. I I don't know if they ever found his parachute. No, or... they never. I mean, they found like ten years ago, they found money floating in the ocean that they had. They linked the serial numbers back to DB Cooper. Hmm. Oh, really? So that's it. Imagine, by the way, uh, it's like one of these things where, all right, the guy's a maniac, the guy's a criminal, but uh, how many guys parachute out of a uh, 767? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it means he doesn't know what it's it means. Been, by the way, it's mean, never you know I mean? been done before. Right, it's the point. It's never been done again. I don't. Uh, Not a good idea. And and people don't see. Now, nobody said, oh, we heard a thud when he hit the wing. The tail, yeah. It was nothing like that. It was just he jumped out and we could never find him over this you know vast forest land. But maybe, but maybe in the movie without a paddle, maybe they maybe do. Maybe we do, oh. and maybe we found something more. Yeah, maybe we Ma- find ourselves. Maybe they find love. They do indeed. I saw. I, I saw, saw a commercial footage. where yeah. they were all naked. It does not mean we're in love. It just means we're getting warm. Chris, punch up DB Cooper. See what you can find about the guy. All right, buddy. Drew, what's up with you? Come on, buddy. Didn't know that one. Yeah, never heard of Doug Henning. Doesn't know DB Cooper. What's going on, buddy? You don't know Let's who go. Doug Henning is? Uh, I do now. Yeah, because I yelled wow. at him for three years. Samantha. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. You, you, you there, baby doll? Yeah. 17. What's up? Um, I, was, I had a question about uh, getting an abortion. Mm-hmm. My cousin got two of them. Speaking of just... comedy, without a paddle, tomorrow, Friday night, everybody. <laughs> awesome. Get Way that to segue. abortion. Good and then, segue. Uh, then go see without a paddle. Oh, God. That's terrible. All right. See without a paddle, then you get the abortion. Samantha, go All ahead. Right. Um, She got two abortions, and... She doesn't use birth control anymore because she said that she really doesn't have a chance of getting pregnant at all. That's That's incorrect. Incorrect. Now, unless they took her uterus or ovaries out when they did one of her abortions. She probably made that announcement after the first abortion, too. Exactly. Okay, so that's true. Totally ridiculous. Okay, that's all I was wondering. Well, it sounds like she never used birth control. (laughs) Well, she went on and off it because she was gaining weight from it, and then she stopped taking it, and then she was gaining weight. She's got problems. How old is she? She's 19 now. All right. No, she just turned 20 like a month ago. Uh huh. She's ready to have children now. All right. Of course. By, hey, by her standards. All right. T- tell her to get it together, would you? <laughs> I've been trying. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, listen, here's the thing with loser family members. You know, try to lead them toward the light, but if they ain't going to go, move on. Just cut them loose. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing, everybody. You got to hold up your end of the bargain. You, you got to be a good friend. You got to be a good brother. You got to be a good cousin. You got to be a good father. If, if you're not going to hold it up, screw you. Yeah, it's family, though. You can't just. Oh, yeah? It's oh, family. Yeah? Well, you, you've never... Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, well, no. listen. You've never heard Adam talk no. about his family. I them. have all kinds of family things. You I do? Have, oh, oh, yeah. yeah sure. Wait a minute. I think we remember... Yeah, I remember we have a little bit about, about this. this. Yeah. We have... Yeah. Uh, cut them loose. Yeah. Help them out a little. But you have... I mean, listen. You, you have to step up as best you can. You... But you... The you have so to much fight the good fight. Mm-hmm. You have to fight the good fight. Huh? You can't just turn your back. You're right. Uh, but here's the thing. You have to realize you may not be able to change them. Yes. Yeah, but you have to stand. I mean, I think you have to. Well, I think you have to keep the hand reached out. Well, really, the, only when they're looking for help. In other words, when they're willing to go in rock a good direction after rock bottom. Yeah, when they're going down, that's when you pull the hand back. And go, hey, you want to go that direction? Fine, I'm not having a part of that. If you want some help, you ready to get out of there? Call on me. Right. Speaking of help, let's hop back to the phones. Oh, see what we great, can do for Adam. The kids. Great segue. Will. Yeah. You're 21. Yeah, I'm 21. All right, you got a. You're calling from Riverside, so that's there's already a problem. What uh, What's your question today? My girlfriend wants to have a threesome, but why, why can't they tell a bogus call? I, I they don't take know. the phone out. Your girlfriend wants to uh, have a threesome. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of uh, skeptical to do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because all right. I We're gonna label this bogus, bogus, and bogus. No, I'm serious. I, I don't know if I want to have a threesome or not. Okay? All right, don't. Don't do it, though. Don't do it. It's going to screw up your relationship. Guaranteed. How's, how's it going to screw up my relationship? Because, uh, believe me, it will. There it, are feelings that emerge for whatever reason because of these intimacies, whether right. it's you feeling je- jealous well, his, or she, it, whatever. It by the way, I love you're taking it seriously. 
You know, know he's just know, psyched. But, right now he's high fiving every know. dude that's but in that room. But there are people that do these things. So the, the point of the, the question we, is. We answer bogus calls oftentimes because uh, theoretically there are other people who are not bogus on the threshold of a threesome. Oh, you're so right. good. Right. Altruistic. Yeah. We never stop caring. So brave. Here's my, uh, here's Drew's original point. Uh, oh, here's here's a better point. Screw Drew's point. But here's the other thing. If if you got a girl who really wants a threesome, she's looking to sabotage. Yeah. She's or, she's chaotic yeah. and looking to stir things up and screw up the relationship, whether she knows whether it she or not. Or, or she's an addict. There's some, there's some chaos here. Something. All right. But here's another good point. Uh, so you're 21. So she's 19. This thing ain't going to make it another four months if she's on the war path anyway, looking to make things chaotic. Enjoy. She's trying to snake that, shake up that uh, snow globe. Screw it. Get in with her and her friend, have a good time, get a uh, head full of memories. And then, remember it forever. God bless it. Yeah. And then, pow, move on. Don't get anyone pregnant. It's not your wife. You don't have two kids at home. No. Not yet. And See it, what it, happens. Sorry, Matthew's, yeah. Matthew's a little defensive about this three something. No, no. Oh, okay. I mean, he's a celebrity. He's oh, okay. probably had oh, a few okay. of these. I have no my idea what you're talking What do you think was going on on the road for last month? Oh, I saw the three of them on the film. I'm sure my my <laughs> wife right now guys. is listening going, oh, my God. <laughs> Because I know, see, tra- first off, that uh, Seth Green is a, uh, he's a puss hound. Ir- irresistible. How could he? No, I, By the I, way, I will is. tell you, he, he is, is. He is. Ladies, ladies they love. love. Him. He's like a koala. It's like a Jewish koala <laughs> I bear. I swear to God, I've never seen a man more mm. powerful in a club than him. He I, walks I, down. I, <laughs> no, I'll tell you why Seth Green does it, because he's cute. And and here's the thing. We we keep, we're keep watching too many Disney cartoons. We think women want big, tall, strapping guys that look like uh, Mark Gastineau or something. I'm right here. Yeah, look at that. Look at the guns on Matthew. The point <laughs> is, is they don't mind that, but uh, they like the little cuddly, cute guys, too, because they don't pose a threat. You sleep with Seth Green, no one really cares. You tell your you tell your friends. Uh, I met I met Seth Green at a club, took him home, banged the bejesus out of him. Uh, he continued the tour. Uh, the next day, I'm never going to see him again. Your friend go, oh, that's I, nice. I was thinking about how women you do it with Matthew Lillard. You're a whore. Think about how women work tonight. I, I saw uh, the Lovely, the movie. You did, yeah, I saw it tonight. Wow. Uh, and his Cole Porter's wife, Cole Porter's just. Flake. Movie, movies, uh, movies about, about Cole Porter, right? Who and, is flagrantly and, gay his whole life, right? And she sort of has an arrangement with him. Basically, they have sort of a marriage. He's just a beer Hold on, in Hold, New on. Hold on, engineer, engineer Chris Cole Porter. Yeah. No, you've heard of him? Yeah. Name a song. Well, I don't know the songs, but he's uh, jazz. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. that's good. You're good. Yeah. You find DB Cooper on there? Yes. All right, don't talk. And, and uh, but but her pre her first husband was a guy that beat the crap out of her, alcoholic beat the crap out of her. Uh-huh. Second is a gay guy that she can't have a relationship with. Right, and she keeps trying to geographically alter his life. Every time he gets going with a bunch of gay guys, he, she moves him to another city. Mm-hmm. Figures that'll, that'll finally he'll focus something now. Right, she should. Call so she herself. goes from the completely enmeshed, chaotic, abusive relationship to the unavailable, impossible intimacy. Right. It's interesting. Huh? Yeah. Like when you saw Alien vs. Predator, did you tear apart doing, yeah, those ab- relationships? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. Immediately. Yeah. What's Immediately. happening with that woman? Like if, if you had Alien's mom, I mean, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> In Act 3, uh, the Predator entered a shame spiral from which he oh. never recovered. I remember Drew saying for Adam that. I told you, shame-based. Back. Completely shame-based. Shame. His dad used to beat him. What Obviously, he was a product of abuse. <laughs> Otherwise, he would not come to this planet and hunt human prey. And the ultimate left. prey, by the way. No Humans, build. the ultimate prey. I always saw that. Like, <laughs> naked dude running from you? That's the ultimate prey? <laughs> to go do throw some you fecal saw matter? It? You saw the crap movie? At you? No, I haven't seen it yet. I'm looking forward not to it. Not yet. But... Well, by the way, one of the reasons I saw it lovely tonight is I'm seeing without a paddle tomorrow. Yes! Night. yes! My, yeah. my kids are completely. Yeah. yeah. Retarded yeah. high five. Wow, that was terrible. Right. I was <laughs> Come on, buddy. Yes. What's up with you? you, you hey, you, mind your own business. You're giving the old man <laughs> high five. Come on. By the way, he's taking. Well, screw you. He's taking his kids to see the movie. Yeah. I'm Crow going lay too. off. I'm going with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm holding you to that. Yeah. Hey, you, real yeah. quick, though. Yeah. Seth Green. Pound for pound, the funniest guy in this business. He is funny. I mean, Dax is hysterical. I mean, two of them are the most talented people I've ever worked with. Yes. Yeah, Seth is one of these guys that uh, normally you have guys on the show and you're like, all right, he's a big time actor, but he can't do what we do. Seth uh, Green comes on the show and it's like, all right, he could do this if he wanted to. If he wanted to take a huge pay cut and uh, not get the chicks anymore, he could come in and do this. (laughs) Is there anything worse than having a guy come in and realizing that he could kind of do your job? 
whatever your job is. I, I feel bad for Teamsters. They, every guy who gets behind the wheel of a car could replace them. Like, hey, can you eat? Can you eat, chain smoke, and drive an automatic? That's yes, sad. then you can do my job. <laughs> All right. I'll get my ass kicked when we leave. All right, what are we doing, Drew? Let's taking a break. go. We're taking a break. Germany or we'll Florida? Come back with Germany right, or Florida? We're taking a break. Germany? Germany or Florida? This game is wow. sweeping the nation. Matthew Lillard here tonight from uh, the new movie uh, Without a Panel. It is uh, coming out tomorrow. That is Friday the 20th, all over the goddamn place. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hello. This is your radio. Loveline will be right back. Loveline is brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Law enforcement is cracking down from coast to coast. No matter where you are, if you drive under the influence, you will be arrested. You drink and drive, you lose. Way off as usual. Right. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew with Real Bad Instincts. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Matthew Lillard is here tonight. Just looking for next week. Jenna Jameson. Ooh. Jenna Jameson. I broke her in this business, Drew. I, made I remember when you hauled her, hauled her in here and said, this is the one. This is this is the future of masturbation. <laughs> oh, for <God>. you. <laughs> oh, yes. Come on. You don't really. I mean. She's what's happening in masturbation today. No, now. dude. There's nothing worse than porn that's like that. Yeah. No, that's right. I mean, you. I mean, come on. No. Fake. I mean, that's yeah. like fake women, fake this, yeah. fake blah, blah, blah. You, you like, know what? You hit it, it exactly right, when you were 14. Adam is. Not into any of that. that that's no. why he has a bunker filled with it and spends. Bunker. Mm, it, since when is a basement a bunker? Uh, a a, a <laughs> Quonset hut Since filled? when is a fortified basement a bunker? Okay. He has a huge room filled with. Since when is a basement with four foot of steel reinforced concrete around it and an airtight three inch thick case hardened door a bunker and, and a bank vault door that has a, <laughs> that like, it's an like, airlock in it? <laughs> when is since when is that a bunker? An electronic electronic scanning device, oh, retinal scan. You read a retina. But, yeah. I thought I saw it in a bond, but I thought it was three cute. years worth of supplies and yeah, yeah. no, no, fresh water, right. no, just porn. <laughs> Oh, but Drew, I do have stuff to live off of down there in case I. You were going yeah, to buy Jameson it. You told Ford. me you were going to put something right. like that in. Look, there. I'm with I'm with Matthew. What Matthew is saying, and I hope he's not saying there's something wrong with porn. No, in general, bad porn. He he doesn't like the shaved uh, hoo ha oh, and terrible. the crazy tattoos and the uh, like hood pier. Oh, don't get me wrong. I do like a tattoo. What about the hood piercings? Um, you know I what I mean? Like, I think yeah, he's no, talking about. I like about... that. It's a little funky. I hate what I hate is fake. Oh, wow. so he's, he's talking about plastic see... enhancement. He's talking oh. about no, it's not even like fake boobs, but like the fake orgasm and the mm. fake dude and the fake chick and the fake. I mean, I like. What do you want? I like the you real want, stuff. You like the I like I, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> not the, uh, the hairness. No, I don't like the hairness. Uh, take a take I don't another mind look the at the seventies. I will that say bad. I would. I I like hair. Okay. I'm a big fan of well, the what, hair. What era do you like or what genre? You know what I like? Porn? I like the amateur, like, hey, my wife and I, I mean, the real amateur. Mm -hmm. I like a woman with, I like a woman that looks like a real woman. Mm -hmm. I don't like a woman that looks, you know, in com completely Manufactured, huge right. Breasts and like, you know, skinny and little. I like a little woman with a little life on her. So you, That's don't, what I you, like. you don't like skinny with the huge fake breasts? Like I think it, that has a place it, it, in this world. Yes, yes, it does. In but my heart, it was great from <laughs> okay. like age sixteen Matt, to twenty. It's, it, Matt, it's time for you to leave. <laughs> okay, it, you now we're gonna now. brawl. You gotta leave. Come on, we you gotta don't, throw down. Seriously, it's like looking at Playboy. You yeah. like looking at Playboy well, still? Well, I'll tell you what's going on with uh, Playboy, uh, which I've just looked at uh, recently. The which Olympians? is the, the chicks are getting too too shaved down there, yeah. and they're like tats yeah. and piercings and stuff I, I i i do believe we all like our our era yeah. that we grew up with uh and ultimately i'm wondering if if guys that are 17 16 17 18 now 30 years from now ago oh why couldn't i just have an old-fashioned chick with a hood piercing and a nice dragon tat and some fake boobs you know what I mean? It's what like gets maybe that's what they your, look at. It's emblazoned in your psyche. I mean, is there really... a woman under the age of twenty five that doesn't have that tattoo at the nap of her ass? Right. And my my feeling my feeling is is 
I don't like it when they get a little evil. There's a weird evil porn side where the chicks are aggressive and they got a lot of piercings and they wear like, too much uh, black and they spit on the guy's dork and give him that uh, game face when they're giving him the handy. Then come on, Drew, let me <laughs> on your hand. Like you want it, don't you? They're like, I'm gonna break this thing off and uh, f my girlfriend with it. It's like uh, easy, baby. It's called making love. Oh, Understand? Man. Love. You, you checking my boy, my son's leave, please? Oh, check, yeah. Check. Make sure they're not oh, listening. That's great. Anyway. Sorry, fellas. That's disgusting. Listen, don't listen. That's terrible. They're fine. There's 15 year olds out there going, how do I get a hold of some of that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't like evil. I don't like the evil side of porn. And it's tur- it's taking a turn for the edgy. It's like Japanese anime or something. The chicks are too skinny. They're too pointy. There's too many piercings. The tats. Too skinny. Too aggressive. Bad. Too aggressive. Do you like any of that bondage S&M stuff? No. Not your thing. Not my bag. Yeah, not my thing. Drew's all over it, What's but that? not me. What? What were you thinking of, Drew? I'm bringing up a question here that's um, crazy. Just agree with us. Yes. Okay. See, Drew's in the By the way, can bondage. I just say, the next woman... Maybe the hottest woman in rock and roll right now. The Black Eyed Peas chick? Yeah, I think she's dope. She's coming in. And uh, by the way, Lisa Loeb, who uh, I like as well, is coming in uh, next next week as well. Uh, speaking of not edgy, but sort of cute and uh, kind of such sexy secretary with the glasses kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. Lisa Loeb. Yeah. 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 Sure. You could get into that. Uh, sure. You'd throw her one just to say you did, right? Yeah, sure. Just yeah. to see she could say. In the fantasy yeah. world, I would sure yeah. do that. No, and you're, sure. you're happily married Happily man. married, but outside of the marriage, yeah, I would do that. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't think, I'm not sure if it works Mama. quite the same with uh, chicks. Like, because the Loeb Lillard would be almost a kind of cool push on the tell your friends category. Oh, you know I what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, what? If, 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 well, who, if, who gets more if, out if, of it? If Ma- more mileage. If Matthew Lillard nails Lisa Loeb, he gets to tell Seth Green, hey, guess who, uh, of course, Seth probably got her the week before. <laughs> but sure. the point is, is and she didn't even know it. Oh, yeah. He'll get on you in your sleep. like a, <laughs> Steady. <laughs> he's like a mite. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> he's like one of them bed mites. Stop. You don't, you don't know when they're on you. They've I'm done def- their business and have gone. Get away from I'll my go behind. But the point is, The point is, is Matthew Lillard uh, gets Lisa Loeb. He gets to tell his buddies he got Lisa Loeb. That's good. She gets to tell uh, her friends uh, she got Matthew Lillard. It's a little bit of a push. No, she... I I who wins? Well, her friends would be like this. Who? No. Yes. No, they know. Then they're she hit. would say they're she would business. say Shaggy, and I would say, and she would say, <laughs> yes, That's the true. Shagster gave me the nine inches of limb. There'd always be the one confused friend who's like, "You got on with a dog? <laughs> no, Scooby's. Oh, Cheryl, just go get some more Cosmopolitans for the Cheryl. table." All right. Gosh, now that we've yeah, solved that uh, hypothetical, go. let's Take go. Let's break Florida. it down. It's time to play Germany or Florida. Here's how the game works. The um, all bizarre stories either either come out of Germany or Florida. People call in, they tell us the bizarre story, and then we guess: is it Germany or Florida? Jessica, yep, you're 17. Mm-hmm. What's up? Okay, I found this like really weird story, and it's kind of really kind of icky. All right. Um, okay, here it is: a 28 year woman, 28 year old woman, and in like sick way of getting back at her ex for cheating on her took his two Labradors and put them in black trash bags and threw them in his swimming pool. Mm. And, like, they died, of course, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, like, no charges were pressed because they got back together. That's oh. not All right. right. Yeah. It's Florida. But, uh, if, uh, uh, the trash bag, the yeah. swimming pool, it all smells like Florida. The lab's trash. a little Germany, but uh, I'm not going... A, not a wine runner. All no, right, no. I'm going Florida. Yeah. Just the word trash. You go Florida? Listen, Florida. Florida. Th- this Florida? guy was with this crazy woman in the first place. You yeah, know what I mean, it's the, the fact that she did what she did isn't because she was briefly crazy. She was already crazy. By the way, uh, do you have to press charges for something like that? Don't you just get in a certain amount of trouble anyway? For animal, for animal yeah. protection. Like what if he just killed his uh, yeah. you know, son? Oh, he didn't press charges. Crime of passion. Okay, we're going Florida. You guys are correct. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, Jessica. Matthew? You didn't explain. Yes. I'm um, like... I have to disagree. I don't think that that Seth Green's like cute at all. I think you're really hot, and he's not. Yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> I will say he's got. There's nothing worse than being in you know because we spent six weeks in our underwear in this movie, and I'm a normal guy. I struggle with a little love handle action. I'm sure. a normal. I'm from the Midwest. I like steak and pasta. There's nothing wrong with having a little chunk on your body. That's right. That Seth Green is a sinewy man with nothing but muscles and twelve packs. And yeah. he's in that little tidy whitey piece of action. Yeah. And I'll tell you, he may be pasty, but ladies, 
He's all of two percent body fat. And, and and the thing about it too is is you know he's a small man in stature, but the camera doesn't really doesn't show that adequately. He just looks like he's in good shape, and you're not. Yeah, and by the way, he's got those doughy eyes. I'm wrong. I I, I think you're wrong. I think he's um, much better looking than I am. Well, here's the here's the thing. If Here you're go. if you're out with uh, Matthew Lillard and Seth Green, uh, you're covered. Yeah. If you like this kind of guy or you like that kind of guy, it just go. depends what your taste is. You're there covered. We go. You know what I'm saying, yeah, Drew? For Jessica, sure. for schnizzle. <clears throat> yeah. You're 24. <laughs> yes, I am. What's up? Well, um, I, I just want to say I've listened to you guys through all through college. I can't listen to you anymore where I'm at, but you guys helped me through a lot of stuff in my life. But um, nice. anyway. Um, I am looking to like re- relocate to like California and I have a pretty good job right now. I've had it since college. Um, and I don't know how to go about like asking, uh, for, uh, for them to relocate me because, um, like I have not done the greatest job <laughs> where I'm at right now. And, but, um, my boss keeps me around. I think, you know, he's kind of attracted to me. I'm just afraid that if I do ask, he's going to be like, well, you know, if you don't want to work for me anymore, then screw you. Hold on, hold on. Uh-huh. Are you hot? Um, yeah. <laughs> you're all right. So well, you know you're hot. You're 24. Yeah. You know you're hot. And y- your boss is how old? He is 40. And uh, is, you think he'd ever try to make a move on you, or he just likes having a good-looking girl around? Well, um, he's tried to make a move, but he's kind of left it up to me. Like, we had this convention in Vegas last oh. year. Oh, and uh, yeah. he kind of <laughs> he walked me to my room and stuff, and kind of oh. hung around and that kind of thing, and just he <laughs> was kind of so seeing funny. if I, you know. Test men men really behave like canines at a certain point. They just kind of pace outside the room. <laughs> Is he married? <laughs> Wagging their tail. Yeah, he's married. And he has kids. He's. I mean, uh, I'm attracted to him, but I wouldn't want to, you know, yeah, pursue all right, anything. Good. You're, you're healthy. All right, fine. Where but, are, where do you live? You sound like you're from Mars. Like you're talking like you're from this different planet. Where where are you at? Well, I'm on my cell phone, but I'm in Kansas. So. Kansas. Yeah. All right. So you, you, technically, you're, you're close. You guys are have you guys have a good relationship. You're not yeah. you're not a model employee, but if you look like a model, you don't have to be a model employee. Oh, my oh, right, Adam, you are on, so up, clever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right. <laughs> write that down. Got Would it. you write that down? Done, done and good done. Stuff. Hey, Jessica, I I don't understand what you're saying. If you want well, to relocate, what do you care? You mean relocate within this this company? Yeah, exactly. Because it's a good position. Um, and and if you're you're afraid, if you go to your boss and say I'm relocating, he'll somehow give you not give you a referral. Not not that he wouldn't give me a referral. Just well, yeah, basically because he wants me to stay in his area. No, look, why don't you get the job first? You can't and then get the him. job first. He's got to help. He's got to he's got to kick her up the ladder, or down the ladder. All right, hold on. I know everyone's going to get mad, but one BJ, I. I <laughs> You know, you know the he beauty. He won't be mad. You know the beauty of guys. I mean, swear to God, it stop me if I'm wrong. But the, if he, if she came up, you know, she wore a uh, mini skirt on Monday and just went in there and said, "Look, I'm going to give you the best BJ you ever had. It's only going to be one, and then I'm hitting the bricks. I'm going to Los Angeles. Uh, I'm going to need a hell of a referral from you. I mean, I'm talking about a touchdown, not a, not a field goal. I'm going to need something good. I'm going to need to see it written. I'll make sure the guy get it." And I'm going to give you a hell of a BJ. Oh, and by the way, you got eight minutes. If nothing happens, uh, I'm pulling my mouth and heading to uh, L.A. Is there is there is there a guy in the world? I mean, like this guy. No. Is this guy not going to do that? He's not going to do he, it. She should do it then, he's yeah? Not, he's not going to do it. No? He's, he's going to imagine uh, video cameras and things. He's going to go to jail. I mean, that's, all she has to do is then say, hey, if he's like going to own this it. company. No, he would do it. He already tried no, in yeah. Vegas. Well, well, yeah, but Vegas is Vegas. I mean, that's why. He, I mean, he wouldn't do that under normal circumstances. Oh, I bet he would. Come on, Jessica. She yeah. is. Do you think he would go for my plan? Um, <laughs> I um probably he's pretty kind of. What, what kind of business is this? Um, it's a retail uh kind of business, uh, retail All organization. Right. You you just tell him to give you the referral. You're moving to Los Angeles. Yeah, if he can't discriminate against you merely because he's not going to his... discriminate. He's just she's a crappy employee. Well, I'm not crappy. I've just not done as well as they thought I would have. So yeah, in terms of sales, right. or no. what does that mean? You relate to work. You you take advantage of things. What well, does that mean? He no, thought he was going to nail her in Vegas, and right. he didn't. So he's disappointed in her performance. I'm just, yeah. I'm young and I'm female, and they expect you know. 
I did like really well right off the bat out of school and everything. And now I haven't done as well in the last year. So I'm just kind of like, right. you know, well, hey, wait, why don't you just take off and go to California and see what happens? Well, I, I mean, screw yeah. the job. You can go find another job. Yeah. Well, she's, yeah. But she went, yeah, just go tell him you're moving to LA and you want, uh, you need the referral. Okay. And that's it. I, I imagine there are people out there just outraged by the situation. Listen why? to the show because this is, it's discriminatory. Why? She is worried that he's going to take some sort of uh, vengeance upon her for le- leaving. No, I, I understand. I, he's I also that's concerned not that what I'm hearing. He's also, she's also concerned he's going to be honest about her lack of performance. And that's how she skates by now is by his being attracted and sort of overlooking that. Yeah. But there's also, she said, a concern that he was going to somehow you know, really take advantage no, of her think, weaknesses. I don't think that's – is that what you're saying, Jessica? Do you think there's going to be a, a vengeance side of this or a payback well, side? Possibly, because, like, whenever mm-hmm. I get evaluated, like, compared to other managers in my uh, my region, I don't get evaluated as harshly as I think I should. And, um, and yeah, I, I know, but that that's not what you call – that's not vengeance. Right. I, I'm but asking, not, do you I think know. he's actually going to try to punish you, or is he just going to go, look, you're leaving, and let's be honest, I'm going to have a hard time recommending you when your performance isn't that great? Right. Like, he pats me on the head now, and now that I want to, you know, move on – from this area, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be different about. See, I'm, yeah. See, I, 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 I can't know. Well, there. first off, well, one is he's going to be how honest. How good she can be at her goddamn job, and she can't answer her effing question for yeah. the uh, three times I've posed it to her. <laughs> Listen, here's all I want to know: Do you? Okay. Is there? I was almost used the word punitive, but then uh, <clears throat> good word make things more confusing. Quarter word. Are you scared he's just going to be honest and say you're not that good at or, what you do? Or do you think he's going to be spiteful, like say, I'm it. going to punish you a little bit? I think he's just going to be honest. And- okay. All right. All right. See, well, there you go. Drew, do you ever get tired of being wrong? Well, and once she's ever? clear about what her position is, that's I know, fine. but you, you can't listen to the words. you got well, to get the feeling, man. Let me touch. Feel? <laughs> Let's make a chain. Touch Matthew. I'll t- I'm touch in. Him. I'm touch in. Him. Kumbaya. Chris, you feel the electricity? You feel uh, it? Chris, yeah. 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 Close, close the loop. Close the loop. Close the loop. Close the loop. All right. All right. Come on. Oh, I broke the chain. Oh, oh, here we go. Can we get? Let's Are go. Are we doing it or not doing, <laughs> doing it? I wanted to Are do we gonna it. Are going to hold hands or not hold hands? This guy was in Seth Green for four months in the wild to Idaho. freaking me out a little bit here. All right. Let's go. Forgive me. Drew's kids are here. He's trying to set an example for him. You're not homophobic. No, he Most loves he non-homophobic loves. dude out here. Matthew Lillard uh, in studio tonight. We'll uh, take ourselves a uh, quick break. Drew, settle, settle in now, buddy. You got charged up. He's he's he's, he's wound up. Where First are your th- kids playing video games? I'm gonna go see. Go see where they First are. First time I've uh, held hands in the show before. It guess. felt good, it though, didn't it? Felt good. It Come on, let's energy. get warm, pal. <laughs> Kumbaya. You got kids. I get kids. Let's let's uh, kiss and cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, there you See, go. It's, 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 Ow! Without a paddle, everybody. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. If you need help, call Loveline 1 800 Love 191. <laughs> Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Lisa Loeb in next week. Jenna Jameson as well in the Black Eyed Peas. Matthew Lillard here tonight. Speaking of Black Eyed Peas, uh, Matthew uh, had his manservant uh, bring him some uh, dinner. That was dinner. Paulie. Paulie's been driving me around for the last month. He uh, had him bring some uh, Cuban food. Solid. I'll Good tell you, stuff. plantains, onions, rice, mm. the beans. You can fry anything and it tastes good. You can fry your own fish, ladies and gentlemen, Just at deep home, fry it and eat it. And you just eat it and it's yummy. Yeah. Mm. I once put uh, tempura on a uh, golf ball that a uh, cow had passed, nice. and it was delicious. Nice. If you if you eat, now, you fry anything, it's good. You put tempura on something. Oh. Tempura. Drew, give me your glasses. I'll dip them in tempura oh. sauce, fry oh, them up. Chew them up. Me and Matthew will be, uh, will be in a S7. You know that guy that ate the plane? Tempura. Tempura. Dip that whole thing. <laughs> you really could eat, eat a steamroller. Oh. You could eat anything. That was great. Polly, yeah. thank you. You know you know that? Steamroller. Yeah. You know the only thing uh, you couldn't eat dipped in uh, tempura? The only thing you, you still you still couldn't stomach, Drew? What's Penis. That? Penis. Yeah. That's right. Oh, that goes outside. Couldn't do that. Say, I still couldn't do that. Couldn't do that. 
Uh, but I would get many bites in before I realized what it was. Right. And so, <laughs> if you had the dipping sauce. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, dipping yeah. sauce. And then when you pass the penis, it's like you got it in the backside, too. Oh, boy. You know what I'm saying? It's like you gave oral and anal a day oh. later. Well, I'm just saying, do the math. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's the problem with eating penis. You do the oral and the anal. You know, that's the big drawback. His kids are here. Just, All right. Uh, your kids are you here, Just Drew. think of it as calamari. Let's go. Here we go. Let's focus now. Chewy. Tastes like chicken. Without a Paddle. Name of the uh, new movie. Tomorrow. It is uh, out tomorrow. Big movie. Huge. Drew's whole clan We're is going. It. We're seeing it. Drew's going. There's no uh, There's no other comedies out, is Why there? Why do you want to see it? Yeah, what, what, what has led you? I think it looks, I, I like all you guys, and I'm going to see it. It looks funny, but my kids are completely preoccupied about it. They, they, in, yes! fact, in fact, if you want to sort of take the pulse of the young people, they were like concerned that we probably wouldn't be able to get in. It's going to be, there's such a buzz <gasps> in. Yeah. They're like, what's going to be too busy? We're oh, great. Drew, uh, Drew's kid really, they really do sort of represent America. <laughs> oh, the uh, One of them said he laughed so hard his ascot came off. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he laughed his, his ass got off. off. He said he laughed his ass got off, and then said how droll he was to the other child. <laughs> the other, the other one uh, uh, noted his wry wit. It's appreciated. What school did they go to, Drew? A uh, little Lord Fauntleroy School for Bino, Albino Hemophiliacs. Yes, yes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's where Drew graduate. Do you want to try a clean run on that one? Little Lord Fauntleroy's School for Albino Hemophiliacs. There, there we go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Kate? Yeah? You're 21? Yeah. What's up? My boyfriend just won't, I mean, he'll get it up, but it just won't stay up, and he'll just explode way sooner than I wanted him to. That happens. Well, wow. that's, it, go, it has to go down after that. She did well, not go to that. the Little Lord Fauntleroy School no, for Albino Hemophilia. she went to some fine ads. finishing school, no doubt. I'm, I'm guessing Geneva. Yeah. All right, so his penis explodes before- Kate, Lausanne or, or Geneva, seriously. Yeah, where'd you go to finishing school? Oh. <laughs> and a, how long does he go for? Like, well, he went, he goes for like, you know, five minutes, and then he took, he ordered some pills offline, and then he went like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but then he came right back, right? Isn't that the whole trick of the pill? You mean do a second time? Yeah, you just go for hours. Yeah, after like, you know, half an hour, and then another 10 minutes, and then. <laughs> All right, so. 10 minutes, you're, I would count yourself lucky. Yeah, here's here's well, ten, uh, yeah. ten well, minutes. My last Mo- boyfriend went for like three or four hours. Yeah, that you're never gonna. He find was that. bored. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. Have, have you shared that with your new man? Have I shared that? Yes, well, I think him. he knows that he doesn't last long enough. Now, have you shared the information about, about the, the old hours. boyfriend? Four hours. No. No. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's going on with you, Kate. You sound a little white, trashy. Am I right? <gasps> angry. I'm not white. white. Little angry. Oh, you're not. No, I think you can. I think we can make you honorary white trash just based on your behavior more than the color of your skin. Because I want a guy to last longer. Yeah. What? No, you sound angry and kind of stupid. But what? What I'm is your nationality? Not stupid. I'm a nurse. Oh, okay. What's your nationality? I'm Mexican. All right. Half Mexican, anyways. All right. And uh, what's the other half of you? White. Well, that's the trash part. And. Uh, now, now, nurse usually means crazy. By the way, yes. Did you have to take care of? Were you like a caretaker at home? Dad, alcoholic, or some? Huh? I work at a hospital. No, no, he means no, as, as a child. As, as a child, is somebody sick or somebody a drug addict? No. In your, in your family, you weren't a caretaker in your family system no. of origin, and there was no alcoholism or drug addiction. No. No. Okay. Your dad hung out. No. Yeah, it's very good about. family. Where's your dad? My dad. Yeah. I sleep at home. Oh, well, uh, so your parents were together the whole time you were a kid? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Sound like she said something she said else. No, yeah. All right. She was just used to saying no. I got her on a no roll. Yeah. All right. Well, look, here's the thing. Does a guy give you oral sex? Yeah. Oh, she's you, not one of those. You don't like the oral sex? No, it does not. It's not, not enough. Doing it. anyway. It's not fixing the problem. Does, does he? Does he at least try to do a good job with the oral sex? No, he does no. a good job. Just no, she's the multi like orgasmic type. You yeah. you need you need the penetration, right? Yeah. You need long. Well, I don't understand the Viagra. Doesn't the Viagra work? Why I mean, doesn't he get some Viagra? Kate. Kate. Kate? Yeah. 
Why doesn't he get Viagra or Cialis or uh, I don't know. It was Levitra. pills that he took. He go, got the free pills online, and they didn't. Kate, for, oh, listen, Kate. All right, first of all, you are not an RN. You are not There's a no place. Way. You're not an RN. You're you're practically you're, I, retarded. I, I don't think you're an LVN. So, you know, if you don't understand what the medicine he's taking, you're, you're a nurse's aide or something, no, right? I, I, don't, I didn't get the name of the drug that he was taking. Yeah. Are you a nurse's aide, Kate, or not? Huh? You're a nurse's I'm, aide. I'm an EMT. Yeah. Listen, have him get a one of the nitric oxide medications, the Levitra, Cialis, or uh, uh, Viagra. If it's important for you that he have a sustained erection after he orgasms, that's how you work that out if that's critical for you. Otherwise, he's, this is just his biology, and you can't change that. All right. I, is, I don't know if the phone's cutting in and out or Kate's cutting in and out. Her brain's she cutting She doesn't track out. well. No, Wait, is it? She's an EMT. You're saying... Oh, he doesn't believe it. You're saying that it's, no, I believe she's it's an EMT. biological. She's an EMT, yeah. It's biological. You can't control how long you hang in there. Guys, just you can control it. You can sort of learn. But basically, the, it, he's, he's not going from 10 minutes to three hours. Never. That's not going to happen. He can go from he can go a second time and he can go from ten minutes maybe to twenty minutes, but she's you know, she wants to you know, set the tempo, he's gonna have to adjust his biology. Ugh. I got such a weird vibe off of Kate. There's yeah. something wrong yes. with her and I oh, can't yes. put my finger really? on See, it. Really? I thought she was fine. No, no, no. I think it could no, have been you wrong. calling her white trash. No, my, maybe she didn't like no, that. My no, no, spidey no. sense yeah. was tingling the yeah. second really? she got on the line. Drew, are we yeah. right? Yeah. There's something wrong with her and Some, I can't uh, figure it out, but I, she's angry. I know it's, that. It's, it's, it's a trauma thing. But her I boyfriends are dead. Something, and even, somebody as soon as did something to her. Adams becomes abusive to somebody that has been a trauma victim. He immediately abuses. That's right. That's how you can tell. Awesome. So all of you out there looking for help, please call in. Yeah, with right. Adam. Matthew Lillard uh, in tonight uh, without a paddle. Name of the new joint. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Here's the deal. You looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? Dateline. One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Call the Dateline. This hour brought to you in part by Axe. Experience the Axe Effect. No, I'm not necessarily, huh? How old were you in 71? 50? Hello. Hey, everybody. Love line. <laughs> Wow, Matthew <laughs> Lillard mean. digging into Dr. Drew, sharing Kumbaya. some of uh, his plantain with the with the young Drews. Mm-hmm. Drews brought his boys. Handsome fellas, tonight. you're gonna have a good handful looking. there in high school. Good Those looking. fellas are good, good looking, looking boys. Good looking, good times, and yeah. big feet it means they're gonna be big, <laughs> big, good looking boys. Play lots of sports. Let's hope uh, Drew doesn't give him a personality disorder with all his crazy demands. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, Drew. What, it pertains to love and kids. Yeah. You love something, you set it free. If it comes back, then uh, you yell at it. <laughs> I don't know how the rest goes, but the point is, is don't put too much pressure on the kids. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look at me. I grew wild like ivy. And, and like I, I said to you once, and and look and, at uh, me. you almost punched me. It was like, imagine what you could have done if somebody actually developed you. <laughs> Imagine what I could have done. Secret agent, gymnast, what do you think? Man of mystery. Could... Oh, please. Look, first off, I'm literally a millionaire. What you need to do, <laughs> what you need to focus on is how much money you'd be making if I didn't come on on this show. Yeah, instead of my, instead of my potential. Huh? What what would have been? <gasps> yeah, I'll tell you what would have been. You wouldn't have been uh, driving a uh, Daihatsu charade in here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Those two kids duct taped to the roof. <laughs> instead of your BMW. <laughs> Matt? Hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, oh sorry, wrong man. <clears throat> really, it, it, uh, I, you know, I'm going to work as a consultant to uh, companies when they try to come up with bad names for things. We're going to call our car the charade. Uh, slow down. It's, um, uh, excuse slow me. Slow down, folks. Yeah, I know it's a beautiful flower in your land. Uh, here, it just means someone is trying to pull the wool over someone's eyes. No, no, <laughs> no. We're not going to have it. I'll just call it something else where you got. It. Call the charade where you got it, and here you call it the turbo thrust. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes? Perfect. All right. You ready to rock? Yeah. Matthew Lillard uh, in here tonight, by the way, without a paddle. Name of the new movie coming out in about an hour. Yeah. Because it's going to be tomorrow. Is there going to be a midnight showing somewhere? I don't think so. Oh. We're a little bit of the underdogs of the summer. I don't think anyone expects us to do 
huge business, but I well, think we're really going to fire it up this weekend. What uh, what other what's your comedies are out right now? Uh, not a lot of comedies out right now. Harold and Kumar came out, and then uh, that's now kind of gone. And right. then uh, Open Water comes out tomorrow, and then uh, Exorcist comes out tomorrow. Wait a minute, Open Water has been out for a few weeks. Yeah, limited release. It's going big. Ah, which one is that? Again? What is that? That's about? the shark movie. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, but that's not a comedy by any stretch of the no, imagination. No, no, no. I think that's our market right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you got your uh, Alien versus Predator. AVP, yeah. Big and uh, this you got your new Tom Cruise flick and all that stuff. The Lovely's out. The Lovely. I will say different that audience. If mm-hmm. you're gonna see one movie this year, it should be without a paddle. Yeah. If you're gonna see two movies, that Garden State's kind of a charming little movie. Mm-hmm. Garden State, the Zach Braff, and and uh, not just seeing the ads for sure. it. Paramount's now turning in their graves, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, promoting another movie, but it's a great little movie. They don't really work that if you can only see one movie this year mm-hmm. angle like they used to about eight years ago, because I think they figured out well who's going to stop you from seeing more than one movie. Right, doesn't really make sense. Or do you, or you're on that fixed in income. I can see uh, either one nighttime showing or two matinees, but that's it for the year, and no popcorn. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's talk to Matt, who's 24. Matt, hey guys, what's happening? Uh, you keep uh, throwing me off. There's too many Matts on the show. Yeah. Hey, uh, well, first of all, thanks for taking my call. Thank you for uh, calling, Matthew Lillard. I wanted to say, uh, loved you in SLC Punk. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask. Uh, you three guys are all married. Oh, I'm getting married in uh, 22 days. I want to know uh, what's your advice for somebody getting married. That's um, a good uh, question. Everybody says yeah. it's uh, pretty hard. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, here, yeah. How's uh? How's your bitch? She cool. <laughs> that's, that's uh, what you we call that again. I'll reach through this phone and. Are they? No, no. I mean, no one. I mean, you know. I mean that, like, you know, bad is good. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Uh, she's a good woman. She's good. Uh, uh, here's here's the whole thing. No one really talks about this uh, too much. They talk they talk about all these tips for marriage and stuff. If you're a reasonable reasonable person and a good person and an easy person to hang with, like. You, you know, your good roommate kind of thing, and she's a reasonable and easy person to hang with. Uh, now, Drew, I know you're making the face. Well, here's the, you're pain in the ass, and so is your wife. That's the problem. Perfect, and it works great. It works great, but I'm just saying, you both, you know, you both, your, your maintenance like no. a, a Bugatti. <laughs> you, you're crazy. If you're if you're a nice Camry like Matthew Lillard over here in Ace Corolla, well, the, well, it's easy going. The reason I'm, I'm saying that sometimes there can be hidden aggression and things like that and the easy going types well then and, then you're not truly easy going yeah, that's just and, and it's hard for people to, put on but hard for people to understand that sometimes i think the thing to do a don't get married in your early 20s because the data on that is bad yeah that's that's the fact how the old are you marriages in this from the 20s do He's not 24 last. i'm just calling from kansas so but i do think yeah i do think it's a regional thing and california yeah, yeah. Listen, is much I'm different not saying in michigan. That, i'm not saying you can't have a good marriage in your twenties. I'm just saying that's you know you want you want to stack the cards in your favor. That's something you can do. Next thing you do, you look at each other's scripts. What is what kind of family system do you come from? Chaos, broken. Mm-hmm. Just know that unless you've had treatment, you're going to recreate what you did, what you lived through in your family system, no matter how hard you try not to. Or you're going to go so far the other direction that you're going to create pathology on that side of the spectrum. So you have All to right. really look at these things carefully and consider whether or not somebody maybe some premarital counseling that kind of thing. Matt, yeah. Does she love her daddy? Uh, actually, her father died when she was 13. That could be good. Could be good. Could, could be, be good. Yeah, she got some counsel. Could be what we call mitzvah. Did, did, did she say, thank God? <laughs> Hold on. Is there anyone a worse doctor? Than Father passed away at 13. Okay. Now we got something. That's something to work with. That's the upside. Mitzvah. Fantastic. That's the upside. <laughs> All right. All right. So that sounds good. One for one. What else? In this oh, show, we're well. so used to the abusive alcoholic dad. Well, that's true. Dead dad is a better thing. Well, well. Did she love her dad? Yeah, she did. Yeah. And how did he pass away? What happened? Uh, he got cancer. Ugh. All right. So that's traumatizing. Mm. True. But but it's not going to... Sh- at 13, it's pretty good. You're, you're good. You just dodged a bullet yeah. there. Yeah. If it happened at nine, that's Different. that's a bitch. Yeah. yeah she 13's had, right on the cusp, though. She, she had some big issues with her mom after all of that, and uh, she she got some counseling for that. Oh. Oh, what did her, her mom do? Start dating too fast or something? Uh, no. Her mom uh, just kind of never dealt with the grief in front of her, and uh, my fiancé found it real hard to deal with yeah. the grief. And... Yeah, that's all good. That's all, right. all, that's all that all right. sounds very open, yeah, by yeah, the way. Yeah, very good. She so loved her dad, and uh, what about you? You're cool with your mom? Yeah. Uh, my parents are both still married. All right. All right. Yeah, so it's going to be a layup. Now, you guys will be um, 80 and... 
together and waiting to die. There is the, you know, there's that whole theory that the first year can be tough. Have, do you guys live together fair. now? Uh-huh. Fair. 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 No, we don't. But here's another thing that, that people don't factor into. He, he, are you, and this is going to sound very vague, and I'm not sure I can articulate it in a way that asks, it's fair, but are you really into each other? You mean, are you, are you just sort of, eh, okay, this is good, this is comfortable, or are we, do we have some passion here? Um, I'd say there's a fair amount of passion. We've been dating yeah. for uh, five years, and uh, yeah. We're- All right. Eh. True. Why? Maybe. What are you getting at? Because because the 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 passion is is a is a dangerous thing, right? That's that's really the unhealthy piece is what creates the passion. Right. But, but you want to have enough of that because it's renewing. And somebody who has comes from a good family system and who has you know parents been together and stuff that can be important to have that. Important to have the passion. A little bit of it. Why yeah. from a good family? Because if the passion, if you feel a lot of passion from bad family, that's dragging oh, you into the bad yeah. stuff. Right, right, right. That's bad passion. Right. It's just anger. It's like cholesterol. It's like it's energy. No, it's, it's attraction. It's attraction to trauma. When when we're traumatized, things things we didn't like in our childhood, we find attractive in our adult life. It's arousing. We're into it. We're drawn to it like a moth to a flame. Yeah. So if I like getting spanked, that's because you were spanked. You know, whenever you didn't like it. Wow. Yeah. There you have it. That's healthy. I a, a little paddle every now and then. Let's you know you're alive. Um, Kumba, I'm in. <laughs> I'm down. All right, Drew. Don't get too cathartic with the crazy passion. Oh, you're crazy. Matthew scared me. No, nah, he's fine. Oh, can we hold hands he's again? Cool. No, not Just now. One real quick hold. No more hanging with Drew's kids, Ooh. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Glenn S. Glenn S. Hi. You're 19. Yes, I am. Mm. Is it Glennis? Glennis. Yeah. All right. What's up? Um, actually, two days ago, me and my fiance were fooling around, um, and he was fingering me. And mm-hmm. as I was coming, there was this fluid that came out um, mm-hmm. of me, and I'm not sure what that is, and if that's, that's normal or fem- female ejaculation. That's normal. Yes. Okay. Normal. Good times. Oh, All right. Phew, phew, she's ready to go. Oh, well, what do you think the problem was? Do you think it was urine? Spring a leak? Yeah, oh. at first. <laughs> Water I breaking? I wasn't really sure. All right. Well, you're cool now, though, right? Yeah, I guess so. Adam, when are we Did gonna... it feel good? Uh, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Adam, when are we going to get that class going for uh, Americans, that was sort of Life 101, or I'm a Human 101? I think that's what I want to call it. You yeah, know what I, mean? I, 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 I we uh, talk about basic psychology and basic... Meaningful physiology, physical functions, death and dying. You think you know disease? A little, yeah, just a little, 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 little info. Life. Yeah, a little you info. Get oh, management. look how to how to fill out a job application, how to balance a checkbook. I'm a human, one on one. Just little stuff like that. Look, if that's a guy, if something comes out of a guy and he's orgasming, he's like, I don't care. A midget can come out of a dude, and he'll be like, I don't. I'm fine. Yeah. I just came. Something came out. I'm done. Perfect. Yeah, and. uh let me say this about uh, Life 101. You know, one of my tips, one of my first tips, mm. when you uh, put the uh, cup of noodles in the microwave, don't uh, don't go 20 seconds, don't go 30 seconds, don't go one minute. Go Instead of 30 seconds, go 33 seconds. You don't have to pick your finger up and put it on the zero. Oh, you see right. what I'm saying? These Instead sorts of, 20 of efficiencies. Seconds, 20, boom, yeah, boom. Two, two. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Yeah, Do you hear me? That's efficient. <laughs> Instead of 45 <laughs> seconds, 44 Boom, boom. <laughs> now, here's the problem. People randomly decided, well, I'll put it in for a minute or I'll put it in for a minute and a half or two minutes. But it's it's no better than a minute's no better better than a minute and 11 seconds. See what I'm saying? Right. Boom, boom, boom. That's three. Here's what How? The beginning of the week, you That's set efficient. the microwave for an hour and you just put things in and you hit start and you take them out when you need to. Ah, ah. Now How about that? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's wrong with that. You can't walk away from it. You you forget. You walk yeah. away. It happens once in a while when you hook up with a rogue microwave, like at work, and you're just putting your cup of whatever, you're warming something up, and you're trying to hit 30 seconds, but for some reason it pops up three minutes, and you do that thing where you go, oh, all oh. right, well, three minutes. I'll just come back in 40 seconds and grab oh. it. And then two and a half minutes later, you smell something burning. Yeah. Well, you're uh, talking in the hall to some a-hole right. whose name you can't remember. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. All right. Absolutely. 33 instead of 30. Boom, boom. And what does a minute and 11 seconds sound like, Drew? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, what's well, more boom, boom, boom. Boom. boom, boom, boom. And then you have to hit the start. Boom, boom, boom. Pop. Boom. Yeah. Pop. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Page? 
Yeah, hi. Yeah, hold on a second. I know, because I, I went to high school, I went to junior high, took these ridiculous cooking classes and sewing classes and horticulture. Drew, if you saw, if you if you could be like the uh, ghost of education past or future and just float above me and see me in my ceramics class for 16 hours a day, you would be vomiting. Yes, I'd be, be vomiting. like projectile vomiting. Yes. Useless. Meanwhile, I I'd couldn't find goddamn New York on the map, and not the map that didn't have states written on it i mean the one that said new york i couldn't find new york on the map when i left high school we never took never never took geography never never any latin or anything like that never never anything uh, cooking sewing horticulture ceramics metal and, metal, metal shop, shop. And metal by the shop way, you big shanks on the side of warehouse how far would it have been just to expose you to some material just to expose you to it I uh, ne never lecture. heard a lick of classical music yeah. or any ex exposed to any any uh, classic literature. And we didn't read Moby Dick or and there was nothing even close to that. It was just uh, sit there and warehouse the tards. That's all it was. There was a sign we slapped on the way. In. You know, you know when uh, Notre Dame football team hits the field, says so like uh, play like champions or something. They they whack them. And ours was warehouse the tarts, and we would all everyone who came in, boom, wow. yeah. bam, every student ever just they slapped hit their them. head, bam, <laughs> hit the head, bam, Man. hit the head. Yeah, the doorway was only five nine. <laughs> Pow, warehouse the tarts. It said big was big plaque. I think it must have been from the thirties. Yeah, all right. Let's keep going, Drew. You're making Here me depressed now. Here we go. Think what I could have done. Think what my potential could have been, Drew. How, how dare you? How dare you? Paige? Yeah. You're 23? Yep. I'd like to sue. I'd like to sue my counselors. I'd like to sue everyone involved in my education. You know, you, I'm going to sue my parents, some. and yeah. then I'm suing the L.A. Unified School I District. I think the L.A. Unified should be responsible for what they've done. Yeah, and here's here's what my lawyer's going to do. We're going to that's what we're going to do. He's going to put up a big map of the United States, and he's going to go find Florida, and I'm going to I'm going to go right in the middle of the country, poke my finger, just right in that like those uh, square cities and states in the middle of the country. He's going, no, no, sweetie, it's by the ocean, and then I'm going up to Canada. That's where I'm going. I'm going way past Canada, I'm going into like the uh, Bering Straits and stuff, and they're going to be no, no, honey, it sticks out, and then I'm going to Italy because it's going to be a world one. And and I say arrest my case and and there's no there's no judge in the land that wouldn't award me millions of dollars. All right, you ready to rock? Yeah. Paige. Yeah. Yeah. Paige, you're 23. Yep. Um, I've been married for three years. And then oh. you know what the next one's going to be? I don't know how I'm going to work out. He's going to go. I'm pregnant. and I'm leaving him. What is the prime meridian? And my head will explode. <laughs> <laughs> just just guts and brain matter <laughs> everywhere. Tropic or a tropic of cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's it. We'll collect the money. I mean, my, I mean, my, my next of kin. Paige. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. Twenty three. Three years. Um, I just recently um, split with my husband. Mm -hmm. um, we were trying to have a baby about five months ago, uh -huh. and um, I was getting sick a lot, and um, so I was going to the doctor quite frequently. So, and um, what I were you getting? What were you getting sick with? Um, just colds a lot and flu stuff like that and um anyway i was going to the doctor a lot and i got tested positive for hiv and mm. um i confronted my husband and he admitted cheating on me with one of the strippers at his bachelor party mm -hmm. and um i made him go to the doctor and he tested positive also mm. and um mm. so i was kind of wondering what i could do or um, so what are you doing for hiv now um they're putting me on some medication. I'm not exactly, I don't remember the name of it as of right now because I've only been on it for a couple of weeks. Well, why don't you grab the bottle and tell me what it is? Um, hold on one sec. Okay. Yeah. Drew just wants to make sure it's not bogus. But isn't it almost statistically impossible, not impossible, but very hard for a man to yes, get very, HIV yes, very from but then, but then, a woman? God, I hope so. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. So, it's, you know, we Paige? talk a lot of people. You know, before, when I when I hooked up with my wife, she made me go get tested. Mm -hmm. Really? And I said, I would too. Well, I was a little dirty then. Yeah. And my doctor looked at me and said, "Wait, 
have you ever done intravenous drugs? No. And he said, have you ever had gay sex? I said, just just once in college. Seth Green doesn't count. But that count. doesn't count with Seth. No, but, yeah. And I said, no, of course not. And he You're said, he's like, yeah. there's no even there's no reason to take the test. Right. Oh, no. Now, the Haven't most you painful seen the commercials? Was, Anybody can get it. We all have the same chance, whether we live in Hades and uh, just uh, stand at the end of glory holes, <laughs> or you're just a uh, 22-year-old white guy who's uh, from Salt Lake City and engages nothing but heterosexual sex. We all, it's the same. It's equal. It's equal. We're all we're all in some greater dangers. Anybody else? I don't know why they got to ram that stuff up everyone's ass. You'll it, scare them. That's it's not. Why. It, and by the way, it's not discriminating to say that sickle cell attacks black people and doesn't really attack white people. I, I, it's that's what the disease does. The disease works. With, Asax hits Jewish people. That's it. It does. Mm-hmm. That's it. And those are those those curly things that hang off no, the, where no, their no. sideburns yes. are. <laughs> those are pass something. The point is, is there's certain things that focus on certain groups yeah. all the time. Genetically, absolutely. Genetically, and uh, yes, you, you're H, if you, you're doing intravenous drugs and you're engaging in homosexual behavior without protection, there's a, you have a Can much greater it. risk. I, mm-hmm. I don't. Why do you have to do? It's all the same. Have you? Well, I don't, I've never been with anyone, and my partners have. Heard, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You have to put a condom on because we're all. Why do you got to drag everyone in? What is that? It's a super weird liberal faggoty thing. What is that? Well, I think it was it was a, when, when the epidemic oh, was going. That's it, stupid. Well, people didn't know oh, how far faggoty it was actors go. The, with the, all their crap. The Just shut up. The consequences are so <laughs> profound. So anyway. And look, oh wait, let me do a rant on this, Drew. Page. 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 <laughs> yeah, she magically took off. We well, she went and got her medication. Hold on a second, Page. Oh, but but now it's, it's like it's like. Can I say the worst thing about getting oh. tested? They you know they do that swab. Yeah, swab? Oh, that is the most painful thing scrape ever. Scrape for oh, the swab, yeah. Really? Scrape, I, you call it scrape, I call it acid in my urethra. Oh, it that was, swab. Oh, no, yeah, wow. that thing. Oh, you that's, go, that's not HIV. Yeah, yeah. No, that's chlamydia. No, but you get, you get the whole test. You know, you do the whole barrage. You do the whole... <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you, you, you do well, your, 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 your wife insisted you well, do the whole She's a smart barrage. woman. I like that, though. It's like when you buy a new house. You have the guy come through with the flashlight. Mold light. testing. Yeah, he's come ba- he comes back. It's like, ah. Uh, uh, L- Lillard's not not fit to be inhabited. Uh, ask, I'm, I'm ask gonna go for ahead. less on the asking I'm price. Gonna, I'm going to yell a tape his underpants. I don't want anyone Counter. going in there. Yeah, we have to have a hazmat team go in there and clean things out first. He's got his bestest and his urine. He's a mess. All right, I don't know where Paige is. Paige? She, she took his bogus. She took off. All right, but how does she take off? Then don't doesn't she have to hang up or something? Or is it just her? She's she, just she still may sitting be, there. She maybe going online and looking for anti retroviral. How come meds? we don't hear anything? Then she supposed to put the phone down. All right, all right, all right. Bounce. I'm putting her back on hold. But I got to go on a quick rant here uh, about this HIV thing, which I was yelling at Drew about on the ride home the other night. Mm. Oh, do you guys not ride in together. Oh no, we, we, we don't talk enough when we're here. <laughs> so on the way home, we got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the 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 evil uh, divisive rants spill out into the parking lot and then go on to the the uh, Cell phones, freeway yeah. too because I'm fired up. Listen, here's here's the whole thing. Oh God, do I hate I hate everybody. Uh, we we're just talking about how HIV is something you live with now, whereas yeah. you died ten years ago. Right. And it was—it just used to be a death sentence immediately. Drew, when you first started hearing about this, I was in training. This, I would routinely be telling people they had three months to live. When when they, when they came in with their pneumocystis craniae pneumonia and they were their first being diagnosed, we'd say you have three months. Right now, well, was it true? I mean, was absolutely, that absolutely, really, absolutely. Now, now it's a uh, hey, you're gonna live with this the rest of your life, like diabetes. No, yes. come on, it's that under control. Absolutely, Magic Johnson. Does he look? How's no, but you, but God but healed he, him. you know yeah. that there's a guy out there that gets away with it, but you don't think. No, the, I never thought. I mean, HIV I is a chronic disease now. It's not a. It used to be a month on the order of months death sentence. Now it's a chronic illness. Wow. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We have. Absolutely, I didn't know that. I had it is, no idea. It is a, one of the most miraculous stories in the history of medicine, and that within a few years of a a disorder appearing. It's epidemiology worked out, the causative agent isolated, and very effective treatments. But true, I thought the man wasn't Crea- doing or anything. Or the man created it. And yeah, it's all he infected a product. the gay in fact, populace. In fact, the medication is making HIV disease. Yeah. Making AIDS. Well, what about the? Is this? Is this? Is this now? Are these medications these holistic medications? <laughs> or are they produced by huge drug companies? Huge drug companies doing billions of dollars right. of research. So listen, here's the point. Every, out, uh, no, this this country never gets tired of, about uh, complaining about the man. Oh, the big drug companies. Oh, the big drug. They're saving your goddamn lives. Okay, 
I don't care what they charge. You're alive. I don't care what they do. They're a business. All everyone did was whine. Oh, we're not getting research. We're not getting proper funding. Where the drug companies aren't. Shut your pie hole. We got rid of your crappy disease. Please. And how about some thanks for the man? How about all you bleeding heart whining and wussies that did nothing but complain about what the man isn't doing and the drug companies and the Republicans and the administration and I was gay bash and all that? How about a little thanks now? Just think that they it took, it it. took 6,000 years to identify and figure out how to treat and cure syphilis. 6,000 years. That's it took right. 20 years for HIV. That's right. It's amazing. It's Matthew, a miracle. By the way, it's still not available worldwide. I mean, Africa still has oh, yeah. they have trouble. Oh, yeah. Now, oh, I mean, that's, it's ridiculous. Uh, Make it available. We've refocused on the man now. Yeah. What do you? Oh, okay. So you've you've cleaned it up in this country. Ah, uh-uh, your work is not done. Now go help another continent that can't stop effing themselves without uh, condoms. Uh, well, geez, we don't have that. Aha! More discrimination from the man. Please go kiss up John's ass. Go kiss Pfizer's ass. Go tell me apologize for all the crappy things you said about him, and then thank them for saving your life and all your uh, artsy friends. And then if you then go to Africa and go help them, and shut up, please. You can't stand that. So it's always it's a big conspiracy, and it's it's discrimination. And if these guys weren't gay, and the man's not doing this, well, it's under control now, isn't it? It's been a blink of an eye, re- relatively. The blink of an eye. Un- unprecedented. Unprecedented. All right, and now it's in Africa, and we got to do something about that. Well, go ahead, all you guys that were complaining, get on a plane, go to your well, beloved can, Africa. Why should they do something about cancer? Yeah, why not, Drew? I mean, that's that's hundreds of different too many diseases. different kinds. It's hundreds of different diseases. Each cancer is a completely different disease. And by the way, if we weren't putting all the uh, time and Innocence. research into AIDS over the last uh, fifteen years, maybe we could have made a, a move on something like cancer, which takes a lot more people. But no, we had all we had to go all work on the uh, the. Uh, the it got very popular. Disease, that disease. du jour. That disease yeah. got very popular. What? I mean, yeah, that, HIV? That, yeah, yeah, HIV became the yeah. thing. You know, AIDS walks. Yeah, yeah. So we, everyone's like marching uh, and, here's what and organizing behind this disease. What we need to do is get like cancer a PR campaign. Yeah, you know, cancer is hundreds of different diseases. Here's the thing: Completely we, we got diseases. so caught. Here's here's what we got caught up in. We got so caught up in secondhand smoke and HIV that uh, we didn't have enough to put into cancer. So because, you know, first-rate killer is secondhand smoke, and then the, the, the uh, handful of people that died of uh, HIV. Oh, please. People, uh, would ar- people would argue that the smoking and secondhand smoke campaign is a attempt at dealing with cancer. All right. All right, okay. All right, yeah, secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke. became First-rate first killer. First killer. Second, second killed at least, at least five people. Right. Second well, hand smoke. Not Rob Reiner. He said it killed uh, 54,000 people last year. Oh, so you guys got to work it out. Wait, maybe not. Maybe you can meet in the middle. Maybe they're willing to lie down to like 25. I love, right. I love Cartman's uh, copy. All right. I don't know. I'm, right. I'm jagging. But all right. look, all, all, you, uh, all you pussies who never stopped complaining, go to Africa. They got an AIDS problem over there. Go over there and help. Go do something. Get on your plane and go help. Stop your whining and go help. All right? Or shut up, idiots. All right, let's take a quick break. Matthew Lillard is uh, here. I just want to thank- Why are you looking at him in the eyes, by the way? As he screams at Dr. Drew, he looks him in the eyes and screams at Drew. Yeah. Right. Does this happen every yeah, night? I, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, oh, every other night. Abuse I'm, somebody. Just, I'm just saying thank the man. Or Chris. Start kissing the man's ass. Start thanking the man. Thank you, man. Because you guys didn't come up with the cure. The man did. Don't go. forget that. They could always buy you them. You and all your the pussy yoga the and all yeah. that. Didn't uh, No, you didn't come up with ass. The man did. Go thank him. Thank you. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back. Love line. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, wait. wait. Uh-huh. Oh, my, yeah. my hair. My hair. Oh. We'll be right back. Love line is brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Law enforcement is cracking down from coast to coast. No matter where you are, if you drive under the influence, you will be arrested. You drink and drive, you lose. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Matthew Lillard is here. Uh, Summer Catch is coming out on DVD. And Stop. It- All right. Uh, Scooby-Doo 2 just is coming out. On oh, DVD. yeah. I like Scooby-Doo 2. Do, too. You didn't like it? I did like it. Oh, you did? It's actually a much better movie than I the first movie. I agree with you. It was really good. It just didn't do as well. I even think that... Uh, really? Yeah, that was I, a good film. Bad, bad release. I think Warner Brothers dropped the ball on the release. Uh, I, who cares? I think uh, 
um, I think Roper or uh, Ebert uh, liked, liked it. it. One of them was uh, saying how much they liked it. Yeah, it was it's good. a great movie. Yeah, yeah. It's a great movie for kids. Great movie for families. No, it, it had it had an interesting story. It's actually, I thought it was really good. Yeah, I got to kiss a little uh, actor ass uh, I've done with uh, Matthew uh, before, but. You know, we everyone gets caught up in these, you know, oh, the guy's uh, struggling with his sexuality, he doesn't have the use of his arm, and he has a bad accent. To me, uh, the tallest order is playing somebody that uh, people are familiar with, like uh, becoming yes. shaggy. Yes. While, while, uh, no, you know, while not uh, Oscar uh, worthy, is, you a, actually is one something point, we couldn't do. You actually one point went on a, last year Oscars went on a long jag about it being Oscar worthy. You remember uh, that? No. Corolla, hug me. Here's Come what on. I, here's what I here's what I said though. I I did say if you took, you know, like I no. What I was saying, you well, didn't say you I didn't thought, say give him an Oscar. You said this is a tall order, and if you consider I, what is. you know what I, Oscar I, I, should it, be, it sounds ridiculous. Yeah. But if someone said, look, you got to play an alcoholic cop, I'd be like, fine. If they said. Uh, um, you've got to play a speed racer and be like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> actually, not the, work. the hardest thing about that movie is the dog. I mean, the fact that there's nothing there was the toughest thing. Yeah. I mean, the impression's one thing, but the two- there was no guy in a suit or anything. No, no nothing. Miser- no, well, nothing. I mean, there was a point where you know, in the first movie, we had a little person. Yeah. What's the PC term? Not midget. Shrimp. We had a, v- a vertically challenged, vertically challenged guy. Bay shrimp. Um, Chris Kershanks, who would dress up in a dog suit. Right. This is like for crowd scenes. He'd dress up with a dog suit, in a dog right. suit, like a Scooby outfit, and they attach a, a wagon to him, and he'd walk around behind me so that people could see where Scooby-Doo was walking, which uh, was a very bizarre thing because I'd take off running, and I'm tall, and I'm I'm a fast mammal, yeah. and he's a slow mammal, and I'd come booking around the corner like, zoinks, and then all of a sudden <laughs> out comes Chris Kershanks and his little wagon tipping over whoa, 10 whoa. seconds behind me. By the way, it must have been a great conversation he had with his agent. Chris, <laughs> baby, how are you, baby doll? Love you. Look, uh, got a gig. No, no, no. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the uh, uh, Under the Rainbow 3, but just listen to me, baby doll. Uh, Scooby-Doo, know him, love him, beautiful. I'm going to get you 10 weeks work, union scale. It's going to be great. Getting a dog outfit, getting the uh, red flyer, getting the radio flyer. Lillard's going to be dragging you around. He's fast, so you got to hang. And I think we can get you a uh, bump because it's going to be dangerous. Yeah, that's hey, can awesome. I say that? Actually, uh, you know, I talked about Seth Green, and I just want to take two seconds. It drives me crazy that Dax Shepard from Punk, MTV's Punk, is now the hottest kid in Hollywood. This oh, yeah. kid right now, just, big movie star. Just ask him. No, well, he is, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's he's taking off right now. He is. And a very talented guy. I love him, and I couldn't be happy. Oh, you want to give, you give some by, props to Dax? Yeah, and yeah. Not I mean, I couldn't be happy. For, I mean, I'd like to break his knees and slow him down a little. Yeah. Because in one movie, he's kind of rocketed past me. Well, that's the thing, too, is uh, you got to watch out because you're not going to be competing with the Seth Greens of the world, but the Dax Shepherds of the world. You guys might get called into this. Oh, same we just game. did. We Mike Judge movie. Uncomfortable. Between Dax and I, I guess who won that war? You. No. Oh. Unfortunately. Wow. Yeah, Dax Shepard. Yeah. Big star. Yeah. Ladies, yeah. You heard it here first. Big, big freaking star. Yeah. And a uh, nice guy came in here and. Uh, Sat down with us, uh, was it two weeks ago now, Drew? Yeah. Dyslexic anthropologist. Right. He won't be back on the show again, though, if he's going to be a big star. Right. So let's hope he just stay, he keep it at B Medium level. Medium star, yeah. High B, B plus. You get to the A. Oh, wow. I should never do the show. Band in the no, show. No, no, you, no, no, no. You, you and Seth. Right you and there. Seth are you're right you're way up. You're, 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 you're keeping been, it real. Yeah. You're keeping it real. Word. Evan? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you're 22? Give some praise for us, Dr. Drew. You are the man. Uh, Mr. Corolla, I go through the left turn red lights all the time. Yes, thank um, you. And um, Mr. Uh, Matthew Lillard, uh, I pray, I bow down to your greatness as an actor. Wow. Um, I loved SLC Punk. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. Word. And it my cult classic. Lillard, Everyone loves that movie. Let me, let me let me stop for a second, Evan. They have left turn arrows, red arrows in Boise. Yes, they do. Okay. All right. Well, Actually, I'm just, uh, I, I just got off work, and um, 
it's you know it's about oh twelve thirty here, and um, I'm just about to drive through one right now. It's Good. my routine. Good, um, good man. Constantly go through. It, yeah, so. taking the streets back. Fit the gin, blow the red lights. Hold on, awesome. Just, just one second. This it's, let me just make sure lights. everyone's up yeah. on up up to speed here. And Matthew, I'd like you to do this as a celebrity. Your driving influences many other motorists. Of course. Uh, here's the deal. Somehow, somebody decided we needed all these left turn arrows in Los Angeles, and they've been popping up uh, probably at about uh, five an intersection. Uh, Every, uh, you know, probably per week over the last like five years, all over the place. I don't mind the idea. You're trying to alleviate traffic more than two cars can turn left. Uh, the problem is, is they turn red at the end and the, the signal is still green. So you got a red arrow, you got people waiting, and oftentimes it's in the middle of the night. If you leave this studio and head out into Culver City, you get caught at one of those arrows. There are no cars coming. Your light is green. There's nothing going on. A week ago, you could have made the turn because the arrow wasn't there. Now you're sitting there waiting for the signal sure, to yeah. cycle I see the problem. around. I see Here's the problem. my point. Why must we sit in the middle of the night with no traffic coming and a green light and not turn left? Why is that illegal to turn left? And here's my point. Just do it. Let's just turn left. Should we all just sit there? Is really we're going to let the state do this to us? Just sit there for no reason? It's 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 if somebody you're just walking down the sidewalk and someone said stop it's dangerous to walk forward and you said but there's nothing in front of me and they go well yeah but at noon there's a there's things that are in front of you the the manhole covers open at noon yeah I know but it's one in the morning and it's not uh, it's covered up now no you stay you wait yeah but but nothing's wait or I'll give you a ticket I mean that's what it is it's for another time it is not that time and they won't put them on timers by the way God forbid. They have technology. Oh, they put the cameras up. They got the cameras up at the intersection, and they got it worked out. So if you drive through a split second late, you get a ticket in the goddamn mail three days later. That technology they got. They don't have the timer part on the arrows. They can't do it. They, they, it sees no difference on a Sunday at 4 in the morning than it does at rush hour on a, in the middle of the week. Really? We can't work that whole timer thing out? Nothing? Not. Technology-wise? We cured AIDS, for God's sake. We cured AIDS. We did. The man did. Now, how come the man can't work the uh, timer out on the arrow? Damn, man. Here's the point. I want everyone to drive through these arrows. That's all I do. That's all I do. That's all I do. I'm telling you something. <laughs> now I'm on my feet, Drew. Get them, bro. Up. Get them. Let me tell you how crazy I am with these arrows. I not only drive through the arrow when I'm first in line... But if another car's waiting, a stooge, a lemming, a whipping boy, a puss is waiting, waiting so the man can tell him when it's okay to turn left, even though there's no traffic coming the other direction. But when a stooge is waiting and I'm coming up, I don't slide in behind him. I turn left in front of him from the other lane. And let me tell you a new record I set the other day in Burbank. Oh, you call it Burbank, but what do I call it, Drew? Rape Bank. Rape Bank. Because <laughs> all they do is write chicken-ass tickets over there and rape the good citizens who are stupid enough to live in that town. Uh, all they do is rape, oh, jaywalking. There's nobody I know that hasn't gotten a jaywalking ticket in that dump. But the point is, is I drove by two banks of cars waiting for the arrow. Oh, yes. Look There's a double place, lane. double lane of stooges waiting for the arrow, and they went back like eight cars deep on both sides, just a whole parking lot of stooges waiting to turn left. Big A, left in front of both of them. Two lanes worth of left. <laughs> and people are like, are you kidding? You're going to get killed. How am I going to get killed? There's no cars coming. <laughs> How, how come you don't get killed at the other intersections? What about the intersections with no red arrow? Are you going to get killed? Uh, you sit there and you go, I see no cars coming. I'm going to turn left. You're going to kill yourself. You will kill. Really? You're going to kill? What? We've brainwashed. What, what's happened to this country? you got to have the green light, though. If you don't have the green light, You'll you get could killed. get killed. Oh, yeah. you got to have the green light. you got to have the green. you got to have the green. Oh, this is all predicated on the green. You got it. Yeah, you got to have the green. It is green. It is green, but is is blast away. Is God is my witness? I turned by two 
banks of pussies sitting there. Two of them, and oftentimes do one, and then there's a one-two thing. Oh, you know, because Burbank's filming. Give me a ticket. Give me a ticket, you, you know, pussies. I, I, the reason I'm not chiming in is uh, yes. I'm a beaten, beaten citizen. Drew got uh, a ticket. Two tickets. Two? Uh, Photos? No. Uh, one was an entrapment, which I tried to fight. They told me to go to hell. Uh, two tickets. <laughs> Did and, you tell them who you were? Just got a letter from DMV saying if I get a third taking license. Oh, yeah. So you're advising these people in ways Do that it. they should be aware Do of. It. That, Do it, you that, pussies. Uh, they are hardcore in this state. It's ridiculous. Do it. Stop letting a man rape you. Do it. Don't let the man tell you what to do. Sitting there like a lemming waiting to get hit by a drunk driver. Revolution Turn. now. If we all do it, it, we'll all get away with it. It's safety in numbers, my children. Swing low. That's right. Free Sweet our people. Chariot. Amen. Okay. Yeah, but let, let, I need to clarify something. I'm looking, I'm looking at calls yeah. coming up here. People going, how dare you say the HIV is difficult to get for men? Let's be super clear about it. That is, it is more difficult for a man to catch HIV during intercourse, vaginal intercourse, than for vaginal. him to vaginal give it, intercourse. than for him to That's give it to a woman. And it is, as your doctor pointed out to you, Matthew, if you don't, you're not in a risk category. We basically don't test. Oh, but you're, we're all equal because you can't judge. If you're not at risk behavior, you you're not going to have the virus. And women and, and women are a different thing. Women are a receptacle. They are receptacle, so there's a higher risk of transmission. Right. But even them. Although women of color are the most rapidly increasing population, well, that's the man. We're doing going that. from he we're going from three them. to thirty. You know, what I mean, the, the numbers right. are very still very small. Now, when and, he was bringing drugs and guns into the people of color's neighborhood, he also brought the HIV. And it is still almost that. exclusively in risk. In risk and by the way, and you people know, sleeping with and risk guys know, guys. and you know. Sleeping with IV drug users, sleeping with men who have sex with men. True. That's the population. Yeah, everyone has an equal chance. Please, how dare you, Evan? Yeah. Well, I'm here's sorry. the hypocrisy of it. The light I drove through, the very next two stop, the the very next two lights, it left turn yield green. Oh, oh yeah, yield. yield. What the yeah. hell is that? Go. That's well, good. Okay. That's that's what you want. That's good, but we don't have that. We don't have that kind of technology. And by the way, all we do is talk about get this city moving. Please, we don't even have that. They haven't Boise for <sighs> Christ's sake. They have, there's three pickup trucks in all of Boise, and one guy to drive them. <laughs> all right, Evan. God bless you for driving through those red yeah, arrows. Is that I, it, Evan? Uh, I have a question for uh, Mr. Lillard. Sorry, um, we're out of time. This, Go. What do, you, what do you plan on working on next? Uh, you know, without a paddle opens tomorrow, I'm hoping everyone motivates to see that. I plan on it. You know what the thing is? Is they think, by the way, we're the underdogs of the summer. Yeah. The only reason I'm the lead guy in this movie, the only reason I get the girl in this movie is because they don't want to pay anyone any money. <laughs> the, the monkey, Go. The Paramount, the Paramount was like, "Oh, we'll give it, we'll give them a shot because we're not going to give this movie a shot." And I think that this movie, hopefully, when people will get out and see it, and it will kill this weekend, and we'll teach them all that That's Seth right. Matthew, what about Lillard, Wicker Dak Park? Shepard, big, Sh- big stars. Sh- Wicker, Park? Wicker Park, that has a big star in it. Uh, Josh Hartnett, that dreamy heart throb from Pearl Harbor, is yeah. in that film. It's me and him and, and two women. It's a remake of a French film called The Apartment that comes out in September. That's actually a really good movie. Oh, and um, The Apartment, yeah. Yeah, that. and then I'm doing uh, the 24-hour plays in New York on Broadway uh, in September, early September, which is a, it's, they take wow. six writers and six directors and 24 actors, and they get together at 10 o'clock on Sunday. Uh-huh. And uh, the writers write plays all through the night. They turn the plays in at 7 in the morning. At seven Between 7 and 8, the directors fight over the plays, and they and they – and they, they choose their plays. So basically, right. everyone shows up, and the writers write plays for the actors that are involved. And the actors involved are Sam Rockwell and myself, and film with Seymour Hoffman. And, wow. Uh, like, really great people. Marissa Tomei, this Brooke is, Shields. This is uh, one of those artsy things, not, not yeah, for the money. Yeah, very arty. All right. Very arty. Hold so on a second. That. I want to talk a little more about that, because it is interesting uh, how that works. we got to take a quick break, though. Drew, I think i got some gas. I'm going to let it go in mm, the bathroom nice. if you come Excellent. join me. Excellent. Take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Love line. one eight hundred love one nine one. We'll be right back. Drew, Adam. Guess how many terrific scents X deodorant body spray comes in? I bet six. No, it's more. Eight. No more. Nine. No seven. Oh, I think I screwed that up. Anyway, seven's enough, right? Uh, seven's great. Yeah.
Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Matthew Lillard is in tonight. Without a paddle, name of the movie, out tomorrow. Dak Shepard in that, Seth Green in that. All right, Drew. That's there we go. Quick home improvement question. Liz? No, I was going to take that yeah. next. Come on, bud. What's going on there? Um, 19? Yes. Got um, a my problem? door during the summer, like, sticks for some reason. Like, during the winter, it opens and shuts just, just fine and, like, perfect. Mm-hmm. And then during mm-hmm. the summer, I don't know what happens, but, it, like, sticks yeah. really Well, bad. you're calling from Georgia. Yeah. Uh, uh, believe it or not, it's drier in the winter, and so something's swelling up. Mm-hmm. So what can I do to, like, fix it? Could it be the heat expanding it, too? Versus no. the cold in the winter? No. It's it's either moisture or, or not. I don't, I don't think the temperature really doesn't uh, doesn't have where, much effect. It sticks. Where does it stick? Can you tell? Well, I thought it was like the hinges or something, so I put WD forty on it, but it didn't no. work whatsoever. And then sand it, it down. It's like the wood, like right where it closes. Yeah, it's yeah. on the good st- sanding strike side of the jam. You got to figure out where it's uh it's it's grabbing. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Here's the point. Uh, uh, just uh, overall, uh, overall door technique, everybody. Don't just start sanding stuff down and and filing stuff uh, down. Give it and a sanding. Stuff down. No, because you're moving something that did fit at one point, and you're taking something away from it. What you need to do is is make it work, not not start taking something off it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like if something if if I had this peg that went into this hole and it didn't line up, don't start shaving the peg. Get it to line up. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. but it's not. But she's not changing. The door is not changing. It's the you just sand. I'm not saying sand down seven inches. You sand the little, sand the paint off of it. That's not a fit. It, fine. It's not a fix though. It's not the reason it's sticking because it worked for yeah, twenty years. Yeah, but you years. can't change the climate. You can't change the humidity. Then don't change need the door. Listen, don't need. Don't need. Tell yeah. the door. Right, tell here, you can't change the no, door. It, it, you can, but the door has to want to change. <laughs> Am I right, Drew? <laughs> I just no. like the fact that you're a carpenter. People can tell you how to do carpentry. Well, it makes me feel good as a doctor. Man, doesn't tell me know I'm a carpenter. Come on. You're a carpenter. So. What are you supposed to do then? First off, I'm a fantastic Move carpenter. away from Georgia. How dare you? All right. First thing you should do is make sure all the screws are tied on the hinge side, that it's not loose, it's not sagging, that's not doing something like that. And so once Ooh. you cinch that up, because that could be a problem there. Mm-hmm. Tight, just get a Phillips head screwdriver and tighten down all those wood screws. And if you get one that's a spinner or something like that, take a little piece of popsicle stick or something wooden. Jam it uh, in there. Jam it in the hole where the screw is with a little glue. And then when it dries, just bust it off and put the screw back in. It gives okay. something to bite to. Okay. So suck all that part up tight. And then secondly, I would work on trying to move the jam around a little. Find the part where it's tight. Put a little finish nail in there, put a block, you know, drive the nail in and then just put a block of wood on it, whack it with the hammer a little and get the jam, not the door. Don't change the door. Get the jam to move around. See if you can do that. If you can't do Don't that, you then eventually you start moving in the hinge. You, just- you can also physically bend the hinges by putting a block on the hinge and whacking it with a hammer or putting like a crescent wrench on it and tweaking it and sucking the door Move the door around. Don't take stuff off the door. Move the jam around. Don't take stuff oh, off the jam. I stand, cor- the I stand corrected. Who knew? Oh, that's all right. Jeez. Danica? Yes. You're 24? Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. What's happening? Uh, I've been in a relationship with this guy for uh, a couple of years, and we have an 11-month-old child. Mm-hmm. He's uh, it's not bad. It, it's it's been a, a it's been a violent relationship at time when the baby. There you go. <laughs> it's bad. All right. There you go. It's love line. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Violent. Yeah. yeah. You guys are getting me confused. All right. Keep talking. Okay. Anyways, the baby's eleven months. Um, when he was first born, he went on. No. <laughs> um, he went on right. this. All right, here's the problem. The problem is we got 20 seconds left in the show. She can't track quickly enough. To right. Get her for tomorrow She's night. She's distracted. She's yeah. got a kid. What night? It's Thursday night. Oh, Sunday night. Get her number. Sunday night. Yeah. And uh, look, if a guy's getting violent, and you t- t- here's here's all I want you guys to do. Your life is uh, effed up and destroyed already. Don't screw up the kid's life. Please. Please. And and all that, oh, the kid never sees anything. Oh, we're they, violent in the oh, next no. room. Oh, they no, know. look, I'm, I'm, I'm cooking up a little meth, but I'm a great mom. They, no know, about, they uh, know everything. I've been here five times. Every single time I'm on the show, you have to say that. I do. Why don't people listen? Oh, uh, oh. If God. They, if they did, I'll tell you what, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> i tell you what. We got to take a quick break. Matthew, let your friend here tonight. Take a quick break. Be right back. Yeah. Break. 
All right, guys, bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the Dateline. The Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. This hour brought to you in part by Axe. Experience the Axe Effect. Everybody, well, that's the show. That's the week. I want to thank uh, some people that deserve to be thanked. First, uh, phone screener Brian for doing a fantabulous job all week long. Who's our engineer over there? What happened? Dave. 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 Big Dave. Dave doing a wonderful job over there filling uh, the very big, big sandals of Engineer Anderson and doing a fine job all week. I want to thank Engineer Chris out here at the Mother Station, uh, K Rock, and Junior, 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 <gasps> Junior, 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 Junior producer uh, Lauren for doing a fantabulous job, and of course producer Ann for uh, booking big name acts like Matthew Lillard, who can be found in Without a Paddle coming out uh, tomorrow. That's Friday the 20th, and uh, next week, oh my God, Lisa Loeb, Jenna Jameson, Black Eyed Peas, who don't we have on this show, Drew? So until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or the station. The, 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 the producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.